So now we're going to review uh, one way between subjects ANOVA so we can then use some of the same subjects to introduce a one way repeated measures or within subjects ANOVA. So take good notes on this and make sure you get the concepts because it'll help you when we go on to the repeated measures design. Hopefully the following will be familiar to you. When you do a between subjects ANOVA, uh, also known as independent groups ANOVA. Now we're not talking about an IV or an independent variable. This is the name of the design of the study. Which is too bad it has some of the same words in it. The reason they call them independent groups is each group is completely different and they don't really share anything except the fact that they're all in the same study and you're going to treat everybody identically except for the treatment, right? So let's say, uh, like the example we did in class, some people sip cola and they say how much they like it on a 0 to 10 scale. Some people sip grapefruit juice and again they rate that. And other people sip cod liver oil. The reason they call it a between subjects or independent groups design is that each person is in each group only once and nobody gets more than one treatment. So, we have a monkey, an alien, and a pirate and they sipped cola and rated it. But it's completely different people who sipped grapefruit juice. We had a tiger, um, a knight, and uh, a unicorn, let's say, and then uh, the people who sipped cod liver oil, let's just say we had a cat, a frog, I don't know, and a zebra. Okay. Completely different individuals, and these groups really don't share anything except we put them all in the same study and kept everything as similar as we could across groups except for one thing, and that's the independent variable, which was completely different between groups. This will not be the case when we move on to a repeated measures design. But for now, different people are in different groups. Each person got a different treatment. And then we ask them to rate how much they liked things. So let's just say, for example, that the alien has taste buds that don't match with cola, and he said, yee, it's awful, it's a zero. And the monkeys have a sweet tooth and loved it, so they said it was a ten. And uh, the pirate only likes rum because he's been drinking nothing but that for years on the ship. So he rates it a, uh, a two, right? And let's just say that uh, the way these guys rated it uh, for grapefruit juice, that we have a six, a seven, and an eight. And then actually we started in our example in class with water for the third group. And it got kind of medium ratings, as you might expect, for, we'll just say four, five, six. Now, the two kinds of variability that I want you to think about. Let's start with between groups variability. If for each of these groups you compute a group mean, now hopefully you know how to do that. You add up the scores in the group, divide by how many were in the group. So 10 plus 0 plus 2 divided by 3 would be the group mean for this group. And you could similarly get a group mean for that and a group mean for that. Between groups variability is how far apart were the groups. And we measure that by seeing how far they were from the grand mean, which is the center of the whole study. You know how to get the grand mean. You take absolutely all the data, add it up, divide by how many. In this case, you'd divide by 9. We get deviation scores with, uh, between groups by taking group mean minus grand mean for this guy, Group mean minus grand mean for this guy happens to be the same because they're in the same group. Group mean minus grand for that guy. Group minus grand for this guy, and this guy, and this guy. We're making deviation scores. Group minus grand for this guy, this guy, and this guy. We square them. We sum them up or add them to make a sum of squares between groups. Then we make them into an average because we don't want the number of observations to be blowing the data off scale. So we make it into an average. And we're using degrees of freedom to divide by, so it's a tweaked average. We don't quite divide by how many scores. It's degrees of freedom. At any rate, we now have a measure of how far apart are the groups. And we hope that our treatment was extreme enough that these distances will be big so that mean scores between is big. Why? Well, recall from our lecture on power the following. In our lecture on power, we saw that we want to get our f obtained as big as possible. We want to move it this way. 
because this is small and these are larger scores over here. We want it over this way so that it will exceed F crit, fall in the rejection region, let us claim an effect and publish our study. We'll have more statistical power if we can design our experiment in such a way as to maximize mean squares between. Write that down if you don't yet uh, have it ingrained in your memory banks. So we redid this study in our class example and we replaced the water group. We reran the study and this was only a thought experiment obviously, but we replaced it with cod liver oil. And guess what happened? Scores fell. So I'm just going to arbitrarily put in low scores here. I'm going to put um, uh, cats like fish. I'll put a 1 instead of a 0. Frogs might hate fish. Zebras might hate fish. Group mean would be smaller, right? Now I want you to pause the video, write down the answer to the following question, see if you get it right conceptually. When this group mean moved in this way, this group mean got smaller, right? When the scores dropped. What happens to this distance here? Pause it, see if you get the right answer. And the right answer is, this group mean fell, and it's getting more extreme. It's getting further away from the middle. So this distance grows. So between groups variance grows. So F obtained grows. We have more statistical power. Good thing. Let's make a little smiley face here, because we want these distances to be big. If our treatment is very effective, they will be big. Or, if our treatment is wimpy, there will still be maybe some distances here, but they'll be small. They'll be just on the magnitude of what chance creates in terms of differences. Now, let's leave the topic of between group variability. We're not now talking about differences between groups. We're now going to talk about differences within groups. And by now, you know how to get those. So, if you take the monkey's score of 10 minus the group mean, this dude's score minus his group's mean, this dude's score minus his group's mean, the lion's score minus his group's mean, the knight's score minus his group mean, right? For each person, you take their score minus the mean for their group. You get these deviations within groups. Then, you can square them to make squares. Then, you can sum them up to make sum of squares within. Then you can make an, an average of them, or mean squares with them. And when you do that, you're using degrees of freedom to divide by, so it's kind of a funny average, but it is an average, pretty much. Now, we want mean squares within to be small. We do not like this kind of variability. Why? Well, again, from our lecture on power, when mean squares within get smaller and smaller, F obtained gets bigger, more likely to fall over in our rejection region, enabling us to claim an effect and publish our study. So how can we minimize mean squares within?